Good day, YouTube. My name is Captain Darren. My call sign is N4VFR. In my previous video, I showed you my setup of the software-defined radio from Expert Electronics, the Sun SDR2DX. If you haven't seen that video, the link is above. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you the interface with the newest software from Expert Electronics, the EESDR3. It's currently in the alpha stage and with the help of Rick, I saw his video, his call sign is N8SDR. He shows you how to interface the EESDR2 to the software JTDX. Welcome to my Radio Shack. Right now, um, I'm sharing you my desktop and we're going to uh, activate the, the software EESDR3, the alpha beta version. And uh, we're going to download JTDX and set it up with the interface. So JTDX talks with the software and we then we can operate FT8. All right, first thing, I got two versions. I have the the Expert SDR2, which is currently in use, but I have the uh, the test version. This is the Expert SDR3, the 64-bit version. So I'm going to double-click on that. Okay, and we're going to just start. So it's Expert SDR3. 3 version 0 0.11.0 alpha all right i'm going to turn on the radio that's already ft8 i'm going to mute it okay there you go it's unmuted and the first thing you need to look at on the version 3 is down at the bottom right, you see where it says TCI? We need to enable that. So default, it's grayed out. And if you do a right click on it, you can see that it's uh, default port is 40001. All you need to do is just click on the button the TCI and it enables itself. That is all you need to do. You don't need to set up a COM port. You don't need to set up any kind of audio cabling uh, path. It automatically knows where to talk. So we're done with that now. Now the software we're going to download is JTDX. All I do is I go to my search engine. I search for JTDX download. Okay. And it's the first one on the search www.jtdx.tec All right. So this is the website here. I'll put the link in the description. And so all you do need to do is just double, just click on it and it takes you there. The version that I got since I'm running uh, Windows 11 64-bit uh, 64 version I'm using this version, JTDX 2.2.158. So all you need to do is double click that and then run it as an administrator and let it do itself uh, set up. It's right here. I'm just going to double click on that. All right, so you get the waterfall display here. And uh, this is your main window here. All right, we need to first go to File, then you go to Settings. Let me bring this down. You're going to put in all your information, your call sign, your grid square, all that information, okay? The main two items to you want to worry about is the radio and the audio. 
So under radio, I've already had it set up. Remember when we just enabled TCI? We have two options right there. It's called TCI client receive number one and also TCI client receive number two. We're going to select number one TCI client RX one. Okay. There's nothing to do under the server. There's nothing to do there and there's nothing to do under the push to talk method. Just leave everything as is. Okay. The next thing you need to do is go into the audio. All right. By default, <clears throat> use TCI audio is not checked. You want to check that box, do a refresh, and then on the drop down for the input and output, you will see you only have one option. It's called TCI audio. So please select both of those. All right. Sequencing, you don't need to do anything there. Transmit macros, reporting. If you want to, to forward your QSO contact, you can enable that. So that's what I have right here, primary UDP server, and that's connected to my log 4 OM. Frequencies, nothing to do there. Notifications, nothing to do there. Filters and schedulers and so on. Advance. I never touched anything of those. All you do, click OK when you're done. The settings is there. So let me erase this QSO. I just double clicked on erase. All right, we're currently, where's the band? 10 meters, we're on 10 meters. It's, it's active. All right, so I got 10 meters. We're not using the amplifier. I got the amplifier right here. That's my radio. I'm already all tuned up. And in the background, I'm going to also go ahead and put the, the SDR so you can actually see the signaling. All right, I'm going to send out a, a CQ. Okay, I'm now transmitting. I need to turn up the drive because I'm not transmitting any power out right now. There you go. I'm just going to move that to the side so you can see. All right, I'm pushing out uh, almost four watts of power. I'll bring it up some more. That's 25 watts right there. Also, the motor operation I didn't talk about, you want to use the digital U. You don't want to use FT8. Digital upper sideband. So we have someone talking to me. You know, I forgot to I forgot to establish my log 4M. Log for old man. Yeah, turn that on. Now my cat's there. Turn on my clusters. KE7DOA. Dead on arrival. Alright, so... I just got a 73s from KE7DOA. I know I'm jumping around. I apologize for that. I wonder if it, because I put the log 4OM, I turned it on late. Let me see if it actually logged KE7DOA. No, it didn't log. I'm just going ahead and add that manually. There's my log. There it is. All right, let me um, pause the video and uh, set it up. We'll make another contact. I want you to be able to see the signal and also the JTDX, the QSO and my transmission. So I'll be right back in a second.
Okay, I think I got it set up so you can see the waterfall both on the uh, the SDR and also on the JTDX. I'm currently uh, finishing up a QSO with AG7TH while I was setting it up. And uh, I missed the output power, but you can see the output power up here on the upper left corner and also any SWRs. All right, the QSO is finished. I'm gonna look at the logbook real quick. And AG7TH. I'm gonna make another call. CQ. All right, output power right now is 25 watts at one SWR. The antenna that I'm using is the 0527 foot HOA antenna. Again, we're on 10 meters. The band is open right now on 10 meters. And we have someone coming back to me. K0HKL. I just got motion in my Arlo camera. That chime was the uh, motion sensor. Okay, I got a 73s. We exchange our reports. And I have the software to do an automatic logging. So his call was K0HKL. Here's my logbook. This is log 4OM. K0HKL. His name is Keith. I like this JTDX software better than the WSJTX. I had a hard time trying to uh, come up with sorting out with the COM ports and um, it was just a headache. So when I found out about the JTDX, I watched Rick's um, video on YouTube also. His, his call is uh, November 8 SDR. So that's what led me to try JTDX and I love the features that they have on here with the automatic logging feature. If you're interested where that's located, go to the file, go to settings, and I believe it's under uh, sequencing. Nope, not sequencing, reporting. Go to the tab reporting, and under logging, it's the second one. It says enable automatic logging of the QSO, QSO. So I like that. And uh, it automatically logs it directly to my to my logbook, log 4OM2. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. This is pretty cool. And um, it really works well with the uh, EESDR3. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Let me show you the whole 10 meter band. There's a lot of activity going on. Well, I hope you have some insight on the uh, Expert Electronics SDR version 3 software and its interface with the JTDX. It's so simple, like I just showed you, all you do need to do is just enable the TCI and it does its magic. I hope you enjoyed my video. My name is Captain Darren. My call sign is N4VFR. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It gives me motivation to make more videos for you guys on Amateur Radio. Until next time, have a great day and stay safe.